The tides of history have left me little choice. And once again, science will require the sacrifice of the insignificant. In 47, we had a chance. There was a pact made for the greater good. And today, it will be broken. Progress must take such a step back. This place was quarantined. You gotta be kidding me. What the? supposed to be a routine mission. We go in, identify the biohazard, clean, and get out. We'd experienced hot zones before. We've had to use force before. But this, this was different. The drop location was different. Very different. Government conspiracies, secret weapon testing, aliens. I didn't believe any of it. Nothing could have prepared me for what I was about to encounter. This is my story, my journey. Major Bridges, Has Team Bravo reporting for duty. Have you been able to establish communication with Has Team Delta? Captain, you and your team need to suit up now. You're going in. since the beginning. My life's work has been to untangle the mysteries buried within the DNA of man and the others. To fulfill a pact and in turn become the linchpin for a new world order. Circumstances have changed. I have sacrificed my very life to reveal these secrets. The experiments I have conducted over the years have taken their toll on my mortal coil. Science has at last failed me, as I am unable to heal my body. But my mind is still active, and it shall serve me to the end. 
I have done what I have done, so my work will not be in vain. It shall live through the ages, and I shall be remembered through it. But I take credit for only what I have achieved here, deep in the bowels of this institution. The work was vast. The moon landings nearly four decades ago were part of a misdirection by our government to confuse the public regarding alien encounters. We've certainly been to the moon, but the mysteries and horrors found there would never make for quaint historical quotation. Spontaneous human combustion was an ill-conceived notion pursued by a sector of the scientific community here. Their early testing on pigs made the laboratories reek of burnt bacon. The human test subjects smelt even more repugnant. I was most grateful when that line of research was abandoned. But there is an interesting side note to that experiment. The urban legend of a man drugged by strangers later waking up in a tub of ice missing his kidney or liver or what not. That arose from early test subject failures that were inadequately disposed of. The claims that the Bible holds a secret mathematical code that prophesied world events. That was initiated by a group of scientists who got inebriated one evening and thought it would make a good practical joke. Crop circles were another one of that crew's pranks. The after-hours entertainment here is extremely limited, and this sort of puerile behavior regrettably occurs from time to time. Remote viewing was a promising avenue of research that failed to live up to its initial potential. Harnessing psychic abilities to spy on one's enemies has a provocative lure but test subjects were wildly erratic with their results. Those who showed more consistent abilities were, in my opinion, inadequately trained, and the program was eventually discontinued. As for my own work, it has always been the primary focus of Area 51, and these other diversions, black helicopters, cow mutilations, and the like, had been the pastime of those unable to grasp the importance of my research. Bioweapon engineering requires finesse to manipulate both the pathogen and the population in a way that accomplishes the desired effect. It necessitates extensive lab work, followed by a series of controlled study groups. One such example of a localized control group was the 1976 experiment in a Philadelphia hotel we were able to successfully introduce the pathogen, which became commonly known as Legionnaire's disease. It became the model for more complex experiments released into larger population groups, such as HIV and the SARS virus. Ebola has been the most virulent of our population-tested experiments and the most difficult one to keep in check. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention as well as the World Health Organization, act as our preliminary survey team, gathering statistics and data of the virulence of the pathogens we have released. They also monitor established outbreak parameters, so the pathogens remain under our direction. These organizations were exceedingly useful in the mid-90s when the loss of several test rats who migrated into New Mexico and Arizona created a scare of hunter virus. They were able to capture the rats and return them to us while downplaying to the general public the immediate threat. The end result of these controlled experiments was to be the resurgence of bubonic plague and smallpox to create a pandemic, allowing the government to control the surviving population with considerable ease. But, these experiments with earthly viruses ran concurrent with my long-term research into alien pathogens. The difficulty of unlocking the alien mitochondria was a continual disappointment to me until May 17, 2002. It was on that day that I discovered it replicates through binary fission with an accelerated incubation period. I realized that if I attenuated the incubation period, 
I would be able to control the growth of the mutagens. Since then, I've been able to easily manipulate the alien DNA and hybridize it with human DNA. These experiments have given rise to my greatest innovation, a living, breathing, unstoppable organism I call the infection carrier. Others refer to it simply as the weapon. I will not allow others to desecrate my work with their myopic agenda. I will stop them with the weapon that they conspire to use against me. The world will not forget Dr. Winston Cray. For the uninitiated, I am Mr. White. My real name is unimportant. I am the facilitator of Dreamland. Yes, the maker of dreams. I like that. It's poetic. I first met Dr. Winston Cray during the Second World War. His brilliance in early DNA research earned him a leading role in developing biochemical weapons. The success of the Manhattan Project was inconsequential compared to the success we achieved. But our projects were never approved for moral implications. So unbeknownst to Dr. Cray, I engaged in several experiments of my own in the Midwest. Oh, the horrors I inflicted led to so many wonderful discoveries. But then the alien craft crashed in Roswell, and things took an interesting twist. When I discovered the biochemical marvels hidden in the one called Edgar, I sent Dr. Cray to work immediately. Working with the greys, as they are called, has been invigorating. The staff is scared to death of them, owing in part to an incident where a linguistic coordinator accidentally bumped into one during an early negotiation. The man's face was quickly and neatly torn from his skull. I could swear I saw him register surprise in what was left of his eye sockets. And yes, it's true. Part of the pact gives them human subjects to experiment on, the results of which are quite often gruesome. But I still find them a fascinating and brilliant species. It has always been the goal of our organization to do what's best for mankind. The pact with the Greys simply pushed up the timeline. Those put in power by us, presidents, prime ministers, religious figures, and nobility, sometimes get greedy. However, an assassin's bullet, or the delightfully degenerative effect of the many diseases in our control, usually takes care of that. Some have called our plans a Luciferian conspiracy. But they will not say such things after the coming of the new guard. They will hold their tongues. Not because they have had a change of heart, but because... <laughs> well, because they will already have rotted out from the inside. The chips we've implanted in the majority of the population under the guise of vaccinations allow us to watch the watchers. Now, how could anyone say the pact was a bad thing? The technology we've been able to create as a result of the pact helps everyone. Our embedded chips in cell phones allow us to easily record conversations around the globe. Nanofibers woven into currency let us monitor the world's money wherever it goes. And we've placed monitoring devices the size of pinheads in most generic light fixtures. <laughs> this enables us to gather surveillance in the homes of the average American. And let me tell you, 
the things they do in the privacy of their own homes is far more disturbing than anything found here at Dreamland. What we have created made the world we have today. It is only natural for us to control it. People simply do not understand what it takes for them to safely eat their hamburgers, see their television shows, drive their cars. It's a dangerous world, which is why the pact is of such immense benefit to us. It offers us a delightful weapon that causes epidemic mutation and destruction of our enemies. And the masses can sleep at night, nary a care. The crowning jewel of the pact, truly, is what Dr. Cray calls the infection carrier. Edgar's biochemistry held the key. I don't claim to understand the specifics. But the result is magnificent. Death has never been more beautiful. <laughs> on this menagerie of decay and corruption. My people were sacrificed to birth this unholy virus. Abused and diseased, they died in agony. The elites have labored for years to make me the grand experiment that feeds their weapon. I am the bringer of death. This mechanical prison before you serves one purpose. To extract the virus from within me, used to corrupt your kind and mine, it is a potent weapon indeed. In me runs the disease and the cure. To restore your humanity, you must inject my blood. In time, my DNA will combine with yours, cleansing you of the virus. Dr. Trey thought releasing the virus would stop the elites and their unholy pact with my kind. You must seek out the departing vessel and destroy it. If it escapes with its deadly cargo, your world will perish. Ethan Cole, you must now play your part. Go now. Leave this hell and save your world. But know my blood binds you to me forever. Philosopher Sartre once said, hell is other people. He was only half right. My mind and body have been altered beyond reason. I don't know who or what I am anymore. We came here to rescue a small group of men. We failed. I failed. But their sacrifices may have saved mankind for now.